Hi guys, this is the first video in the quadratics unit. So we are going to be talking about forms of quadratic functions in this video. The first thing we want to talk about is just characteristics. What does a quadratic function look like? Well, one thing is, what is a quadratic function? A quadratic function is a second degree, quadrat um, second degree equation. So in other words, if you have f of x is equal to x squared, so anytime where x squared is your largest degree, then that is called a quadratic. And a quadratic function looks like a parabola. It's a U-shaped graph. And so there's an example here, and I think you guys remember that from your previous math classes. Okay, when we look at parabolas, we're going to be looking at a couple things. Does it, which way does it open? And your options are, does it open up or down? And if we look at this, I think we can see that this one does open up. If it opens up, does it have a maximum point or a minimum point? Well, we're going to talk about that special point here in just a second, but can't you tell that that is the minimum point? Um, the maximum, there is no max because it goes up forever, so there is no max. Okay, what is the minimum or maximum value? Well, let's count down. One, two, three, four, five. It looks like this is at a negative five, and so we say the max value, or excuse me, the min value in this case is a negative five. And remember, we only give the y value for that. We don't give a coordinate, it's just negative five is the lowest it goes. Okay, axis of symmetry. Do you remember this from when you've studied parabolas before? That the axis of symmetry is the line that splits it in half like this. And so this is an axis of symmetry. If we name this axis of symmetry, it is a line. And so we name it with a whole equation. That is, the axis of symmetry is the line x equals negative three. And when we put that on a graph, we usually put it as a dotted line because it's not exactly part of the function itself, but typically your teacher, like me, is going to ask you to put it in there so you can see it. It helps you graph it, and it's a helpful part of the graph, but it is not the graph itself. Okay, so if the axis is at x equals negative 3, and the lowest point it gets to is negative 5, then our vertex is negative 3, negative 5. So negative 3, negative 5, that is my vertex. All right, we're going to go back to some phrases, some terms that we used before earlier on in the year. Um, the domain and range. Do you remember which one is which? So the domain talks about your x values, the range talks about your y values. A parabola will always go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now I'm going to pause there and mention in geometry you might have done sideways parabolas, but we do not do that in algebra. We will not have sideways parabolas in algebra because as we're not functions. I just erased them, but they're not functions, and algebra is mainly dealing with functions. So we have this, which is a parabola, and the domain will go from all the way from negative infinity all the way to the positive infinity because in the x-axis, the arrows will go forever to the right and forever to the left. The range is the y-values. That's from the bottom to the top. And remember, we always go from the lowest to the highest. So we always go from the lowest to the highest. So our lowest point is negative 5, and it goes all the way up to positive infinity. Our range goes from down here all the way up. Um, it never hits infinity, right? Does it hit negative 5? Yes, it does. So the negative 5 does have that square bracket on it, whereas the infinity does not. All right, increasing and decreasing. Do you remember what that means? That is, if it's increasing, that's like the ant is crawling up the graph, and if it's decreasing, they are crawling down the graph. And we always read it from left to right. So we start on the left, on the very far left. Where is it increasing? Well, it starts here at the bottom is where it starts going up. And so that is at the negative 3. Remember, when we're talking about increasing and decreasing um, intervals, we always use the x values only in our um, description of that. So from negative 3 in the x all the way up to positive infinity in the x, it will be going up. Where is it going down? It starts all the way over at the negative x infinity, and then it keeps going all the way until it gets to negative 3, and then it turns and goes up. But from on the x's, from negative infinity all the way over to 
negative 3, it is going down. Remember that we don't use square brackets in this case because the ant is flat at that point. And if it's flat, it's not going up or down. And so the negative 3 is not included in the, X, in the um, increasing or in the decreasing. All right, a couple more terms that we've learned from our last unit. The roots, zeros, and intercepts. Those three words are really synonyms with each other. I might ask you what are the roots, I might say what are the zeros, I might say what are the intercepts. They all mean the same thing. Another question is how many are there? How many intercepts are there? Or roots or whatever. So in this case we can see there's two of them, right? But you might remember, and we'll talk about this, that there might be a zero intercepts, there might be one intercept, or there might be two intercepts. Okay, and where are the intercepts, the x-intercepts? Well, there's one here, and if we count over, that is at negative 6, 0. And the other one is at the origin at 0, 0. So those are my intercepts. Okay, as far as writing your answers on these, sometimes I'm going to ask you to list them as coordinates. In other words, if it's an x, if the question says what's an intercept, if it's an intercept, it's definitely a coordinate. But it's kind of tricky because if I say what's it, what is the zero or what are the roots, sometimes you might just say x is negative 6 and x is 0. So it kind of depends on the way the question is worded. And I'm not going to be really picky on those except for if the word intercept is there. And an intercept is definitely a coordinate. All right, a couple more things. What is the y-intercept? Okay, look over here at the graph. Do you see where the y-intercept is? The y-intercept is where it hits the y-axis, which it also happens to be an x-intercept as well. That only happens at the origin is when they're both the same number. But here the y-intercept is 0, 0. And end behavior. Do you remember the way we write end behavior? So we're going to start it off that when x approaches negative infinity, then f of x is approaching what? And we'll say it again on the other one when x is approaching positive infinity, f of x is approaching what? This means on the left hand side, this means on the right hand side. Well on the left hand side it's going up and the up is positive infinity. And on the right hand side it's also going up. So and again up is positive infinity. For quadratics, the end behavior will always be both up or both down. So notice that these are both positive. It will always be the one way, either both positives or both negatives, because that's how, how parabolas work. All right, let's look at one more example. Um, so we're going to be looking at this graph to fill in this information. Why don't you take a minute, pause the video here, and see how much of this you can answer on your own. All right, let's look at what you have in your table over here in your um, text box. So it opens up. That means it has a minimum. Vertex is here at 0, 1. Axis of symmetry is x equals 0. I write it as an equation, and I make sure I put my dotted line in there. My minimum or maximum value, it's a minimum value at 1. The domain is always negative infinity, positive infinity. The range starts at 1 and goes up to forever. It does include the 1, so we have that square bracket on the 1. All right, how many solutions does it have? It does not have any solutions because it doesn't hit anywhere. If it hits somewhere, then the solutions means the x-intercepts, but it doesn't, so that's nothing, zero solutions. X-intercepts, there are none. We just talked about that. Y-intercept, right there at 0, 1. It is increasing. Remember, these are our x values. And so where is it going up on the, from left to right? Starting here, it goes up. Starting at zero, it goes up. Where is it decreasing? Well, over here somewhere at negative infinity, and all the way over here, it's going down. Remember, those are not square. Those are rounded because it's flat at the actual point. And then finally, our end behavior, it's pointing up in both ways. So both of them are positive infinity here. If you have questions, remember to write down any questions you have in the margins so that when you come to class tomorrow, you can ask questions. Now, let's go ahead and turn the page. All right, so that was just basic general information about parabolas in general. Now we're going to start getting into some specifics. 
we have standard form. Um, this is standard form. This is the equation for standard form. Do you need to memorize it? Uh, yeah, you kind of do. Okay, when does the parabola open up? Do you remember that it opens up if a is greater than zero? It will open down if a is less than zero. In other words, if it's positive, it's going to open up. If it's a negative, it's going to open down. If it opens up, let's think about this. If it opens up, then it has a minimum point. But if it opens down, then it has a maximum point. All right, axis of symmetry. Do you remember, you learned this, how to find an axis of symmetry with a standard form of quadratic. You use this equation. Remember, the definition is the line that cuts the parabola in half vertically. And the equation is going to be negative b over 2a. This is a fraction. So we take negative b and we divide it by 2 times a, and that gives us the axis of symmetry. Notice I wrote x equals because that's the axis of symmetry. It's a line. Once we know what that line is, then we can find the vertex because the vertex is always on that line, right? So we take that x from the axis of symmetry and we plug it back into the function and we work it out and we find what y is. Okay, y-intercepts. Y-intercepts are always handy to have. They're an easy thing that you can graph, and it's helpful to have it. Um, and the way you find it is always the same regardless of the form. That is, you plug in 0 and you solve for y. In standard form, it's always going to be the c value, but that will change from form to form. So you, it's hard to say it's always the c value when the forms might change. So you take a 0, plug it in for x, and you solve for y. That gives you the y-intercept. OK, let's look at a couple of examples. If we look at this example, is it going to open up or down? Well, the negative says it opens down. And if it opens down, then it must have a max point. All right, the vertex. For the vertex, I'm going to take negative b over 2a x equals negative b over 2a. So I take x equals the opposite of b is negative 4 over 2 times a is 2 times negative 2. That's negative 4 over negative 4. That is 1. So my vertex, excuse me, my axis of symmetry is x equals 1. And you know what? I want to change that out in the margin. Instead of saying vertex, let's label that axis of symmetry. And I use that little abbreviation, AOS, to be axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Now I distinguished that because that only gave us the x value. How do we find the y value? To find the vertex, this is going to be the y value of the vertex, we plug in the 1 into the original function. So negative 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 5. And we work that out. And if you work that out on your calculator, you'll get a negative 3. That tells us that our vertex is 1, negative 3. The 1 came from negative b over 2a, and then we plug it in, and we get the y value, the negative 3. I'm going to take a second to go in and graph what I have. I'm going to graph my axis and my vertex. You can start graphing it whenever you want, but I just feel like when you have that information, let's go ahead and put it on the graph because it'll help us along the way to see what we have. Okay, because for instance, the min-max value, well, we just calculated it, it's negative three. And so that's, it comes from the vertex. It's right here, it's my minimum value. The y-intercept, that's when I plug in a zero. So I would get zero plus zero minus five and that's going to be my y-intercept. So that's just negative 5. So I'm going to plug in 0, negative 5. The y-intercept always starts with a 0. We always want to tell, give it as a coordinate. So 0, negative 5. The domain is always negative infinity to positive infinity. The range. Okay, we haven't finished graphing it yet, but we know that this is the maximum point and it opens down. So you can imagine if this is it, um, then our range is going to go from negative infinity all the way up to negative 3. And it does include the negative 3. All right, how many solutions are there? 
you know what, let's go ahead and before we answer the rest of these questions, keep graphing. Like I was saying, sometimes it helps to graph along the way. So we have a y-intercept at 0, negative 5, which is here. Remember that this axis of symmetry acts as a line of reflection. It's making it symmetrical. So if this point is here, I can go over to the other side and put a point there as well. And for now, that's going to be enough points for us. Um, as we move on, we'll want to have more points than that. But for what we're doing today, this is good enough. Let's just get those three points on there. And so now we can clearly see the range. The range goes from negative infinity all the way up to negative 3. How many solutions are there? None. It never hits the axis. That means there are no x-intercepts. The increasing behavior, well, on the x-axis, x in the x-direction, we're, we're going from negative infinity all the way over to positive 1 in the x-direction. Where is it going down? Well, starting at 1, it starts to go down, and it does that all the way to positive infinity in the x direction. The end behavior, it goes to the negative infinity in both directions. Okay, so our end behavior as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity, and the same in the right-hand side. It also goes to negative infinity. All right, once again, take a minute to look at number 2, Fill in the boxes, see what you can do there, and then we'll come back and check answers. All right, let's take a look at what you have. Opens up, which means there's a minimum. Axis of symmetry is negative 2. To find that, you do negative b over 2a, and you get negative 2. Once you get that, you plug it in to the function and find out what that equals. Make sure when you're plugging in you are really careful with your negative signs. It's always helpful to use parentheses when you plug in because that way you'll get the right answers. So this does come out to be zero. So that means our vertex is at negative two, zero. So I took a minute there, I graphed my axis of symmetry, I, asked, I graphed my vertex. Y-intercept, you plug in a zero and you work it out, it comes out to be four. So here I am at four. I use this as a line of reflection to put my other point there. And now that I have some points, I can draw my parabola. Domain is always negative infinity, positive infinity. Range, it starts here at zero, we include it, and it goes up to infinity. Number of solutions, one. Notice it only hits that x-axis. I didn't draw my graph as perfectly as I should have, probably. I just moved my up, mine up a little bit so I can. it looks better. Um, because it should only intersect the x-axis in one point. So there's only one zero, and that is at x equals negative 2. Once again with our vocabulary, if it says x-intercept, you have to go with a coordinate. Instead of saying x-intercept, this said 0, so I just put x as negative 2. Where is it increasing? That means where is it going up? Well, from negative 2 to infinity, on the x-axis, it's going up. On the x-axis from negative infinity all the way over to negative 2, it's going down. Our end behavior is going up on both ends. Okay, once again, any questions, please write them in the margins, and we will discuss standard form and basic characteristics when we get to class.